Welcome. My name is George Pearson and I run the How To Gurus channel here on YouTube. Most of the videos on my channel are short demonstrations of the different tools and techniques that you'll find in different software programs. Right now I have several hundred of these quick videos available on YouTube. This video though is different. This is one in a series of longer project demonstrations that I'm doing that show you how to complete complex projects from start to finish such as changing this background or adding in these swirls or changing hair color. All the images I use in these are public domain and you'll find a link to the pictures in the description if you want to work along and follow my demonstrations. Okay, let's go ahead and move into the project. In this Photoshop project we're going to tackle a very difficult picture and that's this one right up here. Here's the original on that. We'll be solving this black area over here. There's actually nothing in here, so we need to replace that with something. We'll be getting rid of that tankard right there. We'll be removing the purse, fixing her neckline, as you can see down here, and generally doing, doing a lot of repair on this particular image, getting rid of some of that vignetting happening around there. So a lot of things to fix on this picture. We'll go ahead and take a look at the original here. Now what I always do is I always copy my image like that and then save a background image because I need to go back to that for some reason. That's a real good idea on a picture like this. Now the approach on this is going to be actually removing the girl from the picture and removing that tankard. Then fixing the table, fixing the lighting, fixing the back wall. Once all that's done We'll then put the girl back into the picture and fix the problems in there like the missing elbow, things like that. So that's our approach. It's going to be taking some selections and then removing of the girl. Now some, some things won't be that difficult. Let's say there's a lot of hair over here on that background. That doesn't matter. We can leave that is. Actually, you know, take that background along with it. That's going to be just fun. That'll blend in. No real reason to worry about that. So there we go. Now the approach on this is to use a tool to come in here and make a selection. You can use any selection tool you want to use on this. I'm just going to do this one fast this time and I'm going to use the polygonal lasso tool and create a selection using this tool and because it's a, a difficult picture I'll probably do this on a mask as well. Let's just go ahead and make a mask for this. There we go. And on a mask, white is showing everything and black is hiding. So let's reverse those. And we'll zoom in a bit more. There we go. And I'll just use this little selection tool here and create a careful selection around the hair. Now since we're putting her back onto the same background or practically the same background anyway, it doesn't have to be perfectly perfect or exact because it's going to blend right in with what we're going to be replacing on the background. I'll do just a little bit of this. I'm not going to bore you with watching me do the whole picture and the whole selection. But we can see what I'll do on this one side and then I'll repeat the same thing off camera for the other part of the picture. And I'm just clicking and then moving my cursor and clicking again and that gives me a line. You see here it pulls a line with it. You see it better right there. It pulls a line and each time I click it pins that line to that point and I get another line. So I'm just kind of clicking around and creating the shape I want. If you pull it just off the picture like that you can see it actually scrolls the picture which is very useful. And again since we're going to be putting this back onto the same background it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect along this edge. I'm not going to worry about the edge that much. I want it to be accurate but it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. 
And we'll just finish down this one side. There we go. I'm just continuing on along. Now the cursor I'm using here, I have my cursors set to precise as opposed to just showing me the shape of the tool, which I, I never like that. And you can do that under the preferences, which is at the bottom of the edit menu, you find preferences and cursors, and then just set the cursor for precise. And you get this nice little cross here, which makes it real easy to spot where you're working. Okay, it's going to be tricky down here because of that missing elbow. So I'm going to just kind of eyeball this. We may want to come back in and adjust that later. One of the reasons to do this as a mask is because that little bit of a shape in there may need some adjusting. Okay, bring it right down to the table down here. So that's good. I'll now to scroll to the left hand side. I'll follow that table along, which is right about like that. Now I can just go straight up here, clear to the top of the picture. And you can click outside, as you can see. And I'll scroll to the right a little bit. Okay, there is her head coming back in again, so our beginning line is right around here, so and there's a the beginning. So there's that, and I'm just going to fill this, and we're on the mask, you can see the white outline there, we're on the mask, I'm just going to fill this with black, and that then hides it, just like this. So if I show our background in behind, as you can see there, it's just hidden that bit, so I can then work with that. Okay, so that is the approach. I'll be building that mask for the rest of her image. I'll be building on this side as well. And down here, I'm not going to care about in behind there, in behind there. That's going to blend in just fine. So I'll go ahead and I'll do this side off camera. And then I'll bring the image back up again, the, the video back up again as soon as I have her masked out. Okay, there we go. I now have the whole back ground here masked out. We'll put that back in again, but we'll clean that clean that up. So there's the background mask. That's good. Let's now make another copy of our background here. Let's pull that down. There's our background copy. In this one, we want to get rid of the girl and just give us a clean background. So let's start by doing some standard stuff here with our clone stamp tool and work into some areas. Now, Let's fix this section up here. Notice we have a brick line right here, and then we have these lines there for the wood. That gives us some areas to work into to keep this as clean as possible. So let's start off with creating a selection marquee in here. And I'll kind of estimate where that wood is. That's pretty good. I'll take a clear outside, and then back to the beginning again. So we'll work inside this area first. The reason I'm doing that is because we have this natural line here and working inside of that natural line will make it look a lot more realistic and we have you know, kind of a demarcation area which will help us. Okay, so there we go. Let's grab our clone stamp tool. Size looks pretty good. I'm just going to copy some stuff from here and just paste it right over there. Hold the Alt key down and select and this just, this you can kind of see the brick pattern in there. So I'm going to make sure I can, you know, line the bricks up as well as possible. I may need to come in and do some adjustments on that. But keep in mind that her image is going to be back on top of this again. That looks pretty good there. A little rough right there. I'm going to step back one step, make my brush size a little bit smaller here for that. Let's 
So can I take out that section? We're getting a little bit in here. So let me try a different spot. That looks okay. And then I'll come down here and just kind of blend in some of this. Okay, it's a little rough in a couple of spots there, but I think we can get away with that. I don't think anybody's going to notice. You can copy this corner right here and put that corner up in here. And use that to make it a little bit more even. That looks pretty good. Now, of course, we put the girl back in front. As you can see, she detracts away from the background. So no one's going to be really looking at that brick that carefully. But I may want to fix this little spot right there. That's a little bit rough. So I'll grab some brick here, come in the middle here, and just fill in that whole brick. There we go. It's kind of doing a a center of a brick area here. Okay, see how we're going. Okay, sorry from that one little bit there. I think we've got it. Let's just find a good match for that. Maybe right there. Okay, so that looks good. We've now clean this out when her figure's back in there again that hides that nicely and that looks very very naturalistic okay let's move on down take a look at this wooden beam right in here I'll do that beam next let's deselect we want to fill in that section in there so let's just move her out of the way so we'll grab our polygonal lasso tool again I'll just come like this and we'll come in and Come right across the edge of that beam and right across that seam there. Then I'll just copy a little bit from here and just drop it in over to that side. There we go. Now this is, of course is in behind her so that's all right. off on that one. Now to soften up that edge here I can make my hardness here real soft. And that should blend that edge in a little bit better. And keep in mind it doesn't need to be perfect because of course her figure is going to be coming in in front of that. So all this stuff here doesn't matter. You see right there, that just goes away. What I wanted to do though was to make sure we had that nice and clean. Now what we're approaching here is the left hand side where we really need to fix this image. So let's just deselect this. That's looking pretty good. There we go. I think I can live with that. Maybe a little bit up here needs a little bit more attention right in there just being a little bit picky right now okay and then that's in behind her at that point perfect okay back out so far so good now it gets a little bit trickier on this part because we have nothing down here to pull out. It's really very, very dark. We had that vignetting happening up there. That's vignetting, that's easy to handle. Just take a little bit of this brick, stick it up there, and we're done. Or I can even, if I wanted to, use my dodge tool and this little larger size here. There we go. Soft brush. 
and I can just come in and click into this a little bit and lighten up and remove that that vignette not too bad that side of the brick actually is is okay a little bit of touch-ups only real problem here is it gets a little dark right there but it's dark wood I think we can live with that let me try to lighten up just a little bit here. There's not really nothing in there to lighten up. Real problem though, of course, is that shoulder. So you need to fix that shoulder. So again, I'll grab our polygonal lasso tool. Let's just zoom in a little bit here. Maybe not quite that much. And let's make a protected area to work into. There we go, back to the clone stamp. And let's just find some brick to stick in there. I'm going to take a little bit of this over here. I'll start off with that seam right there. Grab that. Let's bring our brush size up again. And I'll line up those brick lines. And then just paint that in. That's pretty good. Now we need to lighten that up again, so come back to our dodge tool. That works. Let's deselect that and back out. Okay, the top half of the picture is good. If I put her back on again, it looks perfect. That's taken care of. Down here, this is a real mess. This has to be cleaned up completely. Not much of a problem over there. The table is pretty easy. It's this dark area here. That's the biggest problem with the exposure on this. So I need to make a selection area in here, and we're going to grab some brick from up here and just copy it down into this section down below. Again, it's coming a little ways into the figure. You don't have to go too far because, of course, her figure is going to be blocking, blocking that area. So let's grab our marquee tool again we have brick in here it's a little hard to see that line maybe I'll pull a reference line down so I can kind of see where that should be and I'll pull one down for the edge of the table as well it's not exact on the table the table moves a little bit it's at a little bit of an angle as you can see there on that side but it's close enough for me to work into it here okay let's do our marquee again I'll start outside and then just come over her figure a little bit. And right to that line. You can see right there. I'll just line that up. Back up to my starting point. There it is. Let's now put some brick into that area. Back out just a little bit, a little more. Clone stamp too. I'll just come up here in the middle someplace. There we go. And come down here in the middle somewhere. And let's just put in some brick. You know, I'll hide that foreground picture. There we go. Okay, brick in there. That works out well. Notice how that looks good. Because the, this wood goes dark anyway, so leaving that dark was fine. That looks pretty good. Okay, we now need to fix the left side of the table over in here. Then we'll come over and we'll just take out that little bit there just to keep things real nice and clean. So I'll select in the table. Let's just hide those guys. I was clearly guides out. And grab my marquee tool again. I'll start right there. This time I'm going to see if I can come in and actually get a little more of that table and scroll over and up back to our beginning spot there we go it's now copy table over here clone stamp tool let's bring the size up a lot the bigger the size is the harder it's going to be to see the edges notice those edges so that's pretty good size I'm going to grab this line right in here 
and then I'll pull that line over as far as I can. Maybe right there. Okay, do a little more of that and just hide some of those spots that are obviously duplicated. There we go. Looks pretty good. I think we're okay on the table. Let's deselect that. And then finally we'll finish off this section right here just so we go ahead and do the whole thing. And again, use the polygonal lasso tool in here to give me an area to work into. And right down to the table edge. There we go. And this time I'm going to be copying from over here and just putting it in behind there. Now this is all, of course, behind her figure, so it's not that critical. I'm just doing this just to be consistent in here. All right deselect that. Let's zoom out. So there we go. We've now fixed the background with the girl removed and we have the girl separate up here. If I put them together it looks like the original picture again. If I pull this picture up here there we go. So I oh, pulled the wrong one up actually. You double click and get that off of the background. There we go. That works. Okay, there's the original and there's our cleaned up version. And unless you compare exactly, you wouldn't notice where it's been cleaned. So that takes care of most of those problems. We can now get down to the, the picky stuff. Like fixing her arm right down here and removing the purse and fixing that neckline we also have some red eye in here to solve as well. Let's go ahead and fix this red eye first. Just get that out of the way. And bring our brush size down a bit. There we go. So we'll use the red eye tool right there. And I'll just find the center of the eye. And click. There we go. Center of the eye here. And click. And Photoshop fixes that real nice. It's such an easy tool to use. Just grab the tool, find the middle of your eye, go ahead and click on that, and it should be just fine. You can come up here and adjust those settings if you want to, but in most cases you won't need to. Okay, so the red eye has been fixed. Looking good. So we still have the neckline, the purse, and that left elbow to solve. Let's take care of this purse. This is a little more of that clone stamp. Luckily we have a real patterned area in here on our top which we may be able to come in here and people will probably not notice that we're doing some clone stamping. It's not perfect. It's it's not going to be an exact match but it may be good enough and be confusing enough that we can get away with this. So again grab our marquee tool and I'm going to make a selection right along her arms here. It's real careful selection. And right along where the edge of that table is. Luckily her hand here is in front of the purse. If her hand is behind the purse, this would make this almost impossible to do. Okay, I'll just kind of finish this off up and around a little bit here. And then we'll come down and find where my starting point was. There we go. So now I have a selection in here, and let's try doing some careful clone stamping and see how well we can manage this. I think that brush size is pretty good. Now if you can find a pattern like this that has a nice shape to it, try copying shapes over if you can. And this one here, you can try to copy shapes over, because the eye will follow that shape, 
and then it will believe that everything continues. So there we go, that's pretty good. I'll take this thing and put that down over here. So you want to, whenever possible, try to find ways of repeating these different pattern shapes. Let's just see how far we can take this. I think right now I'm just going to come in and put in just some real basic coloration in here on the pattern and then once that's in we'll come back in and we'll carefully put in some some shapes to clean things up. Okay, pretty good. I think I'll grab this butterfly shape and I'll stick that right over here. Like that. Maybe grab that flower and bring a flower in right there. Another flower right here, right where it's not looking that great. I'm just copying in some areas that have real definite edges to them. Okay, I don't think that anybody's going to spot that. Let's just back it up a little bit and take a look. Let's deselect and back up. Okay, yeah, that's going to work out just fine. So we're okay down in there. Maybe a little bit dark right here. We can lighten that up again with the dodge tool. Let me bring that size down a little bit. Just a few tabs of that to lighten that up. Okay, so we have the purse gone. Eyes are fixed. We need to fix the neckline here and that elbow. We'll do the elbow last. This is a little spot right there I don't like. See a little line there. I don't like that over here. Looks like I, I missed a little bit when I did my edge. So. Let's just see if we can put a little bit of that brick into there. I'm going to come just a little ways into the table here. Just about that far. There we go, just a little tweak. And I'll grab some of that right there and just pull it straight down. Oh, you know, we're on the wrong line. Background, there we go. Obviously, I can't paint clear onto this thing. Okay, I think that cleans that up nicely. That's a little rough. So I'll grab just some random brick up here. Put a little bit of that just to break that up. All right, back out again. That's fixed. I like that now. Arm is still a big problem. Neckline is a problem. Everything else is okay. Let's take care of this neckline. Now, this is a, a sneaky little trick we're going to be doing here on this. And let me show you that. I'll come back up onto this image here. Let's make a selection around this top shape and then we're going to use the puppet warp tool to actually change the shape of this distort the image a little bit allowing us to change that neckline and I'll just come right right along the edge of that as carefully as I can So I want to retain the edge of that neckline. I just want to reposition it. So let's make a new layer from that. Do layer, new, copy. There we go. Let's now go to edit, puppet warp. And we get this grid pattern right on that layer. I can now use that and actually pull this shape around. 
First thing you want to do is you want to come down here and along the bottom edge put in some points. Just click on the bottom edge, put in some points. These are going to act like pins or tacks and hold that bottom where it is. We want that to stay put. And I want this outside edge to stay put as well. Same thing over here. I want it to scroll along this edge. I want this edge to stay put. I want to move everything in here. Now down through here I want this to stay the same so I'll put in a few of these points. About that far. Okay now if I come in and grab a piece of this notice I can actually pull this up and I can change the shape of this but wherever it is on these other points those points stay put so I can come in here and now just begin to grab parts of this here and reposition this and actually rebuild that line of that top and give it a little more a little more modesty in here One of the neat things about this puppet warp tool is you can actually warp images around any way you want to following these little little points that you're grabbing. Big trick here is going to be trying to keep this edge smooth so we don't have any weird little bumpy things happen. I can fix that with just a little bit of an eraser tool in there. Okay, let's see how that's, how that's going. Let's apply that before and after, looking a lot better. A little bit of a rough edge, so let's just use our eraser tool on that. Make sure you're on that top layer here. And I'll bring that tool way down. Should be a hard edge, just a little bit of soft, so maybe not much, just a touch. And I'll just come in here and clean that edge up just a little bit right there so it's smooth. And there we go. So there's the original top, and we've pulled that up and made it a little more modest in here. Let's take a look at that view, fit on screen. Looks better, you can't tell at all from this distance. Again, this Puppet Warp tool is a great little tool for this kind of real tricky manipulation on your image because it actually bends the image around based upon those points. Okay, last thing to fix then is just this elbow. Now, this is the most difficult part of this whole picture. That's why I've left this one for last. We're going to fix this elbow in here. We have to actually come in and fill this in with other stuff that doesn't exist. Again, I'll try the clone stamp tool on this. See how far I can go with that, but you can't, it's not going to go all the way, unfortunately. Now, because this bit is so tricky in here, I'm going to actually make a selection, copy the arm out, put the arm on its own layer. Just in case this gets messed up, I can then go back and try it again. So I'll make myself some protection in here to do that. So we'll start off with making a careful selection around the arm. Luckily the arm is pretty standard here shape-wise. And let's work down around the bottom edge here. Now I'll take clear past the table a little bit. I don't need to be as careful on this side, so I'll just come up around just like that. And then up in here, I'll be a little more careful on this bit here. And back to the beginning. Let's make a new layer of this. Layer new via copy. No, oh, actually I forgot one, one step. 
make sure that we're on the right image. There we go. And there it is. So there's our new arm layer. I'll make a copy of that, a backup copy of that, just in case. And I'll pull that down below here. Just in case I mess things up, I can always just grab that. I don't have to go back in and try anything else. I can just duplicate that as often as I need to until I get this thing correct. Okay, now the trick here is going to be taking some of this stuff and try to putting it in here, try to come in and actually rebuild the shape of this arm and fill in some of this stuff. It's going to be a bit of back and forth work on this. Now luckily since we have this arm in its own area, you can see it right there all by itself. And let's hide that top. There we go. The nice thing about doing this technique is that I can come in here with the magic wand. I can click outside. That selects the whole outside area. And then just invert this. Select inverse. And then I have just the arm selected. So because of the transparency, it's real easy to make a real fast selection this way. All right, let's grab our clone stamp tool. And I'll hold that down, try to find a spot right in here someplace. I'll click and let's bring that down and see if I can begin to remove some of that tankard. Let's try coming out outside here. I'll click there. I'll pull that down here and try a little bit of that. Now because I have that selection, that selection will help us get our curve back in again down here. Since that gives us the curve. Okay, looking not too bad. I think that's all right. Here's a real tricky part. I'll grab some of that and let's just take that over a little bit. We'll come back and do a little bit of an additional fix on that section once we have this all cleaned up. Okay, a little more tricky stuff down here. I'll grab the arm right in there, pull it straight up. Just kind of you know working back and forth, trying to remove that tanker if at all possible. And I think we're getting there. Let's just get some flesh. I'm gonna have to come back in and actually put in some shadowing down on that side. Okay, not too bad. Let's now try to build in some shadow again. We'll go back over here, take our burn tool, bring the size up a little bit. Pull that along the edge. There's a little bit of a shadowing in there. Now we don't have the nice color that I want in here, so let's go to the sponge tool and switch this to saturate instead of desaturate. And just some brushing over that that will bring some color back into that. A little too far there. Let me back up a couple of steps. So you can see it's it's a process of going back and forth with the different tools to try to get just the right effect. And if if you're careful with it, you can get it so it probably won't be noticed, especially in a picture like this, everybody's gonna be looking at the girl's face instead of anything else. Okay, I think we're pretty close close there. Try to smooth out that line. Okay, let's go back here to the clone stamp tool. 
So a little more in there. Now I want to bring that line down just a little bit right there. So let's go back here to our puppet warp. There we go. I'm going to grab this bit right here. Oh, a bit too far. Let's just undo all of that. Let me put in some lines, some, some spots up here to kind of hold this in place. Again, using these just to pin this so it doesn't go anywhere. And then I can pull that down a little bit. There we go. And use the Puppet Warp tool to give me that curve back on the crease right there on the elbow. Okay, I think that's good. I'll just set that in place. Looks good. Got that pretty quickly. Looks kind of strange there. But I think we've got that. I think that works. Okay, let's bring our girl back in again. Yep, that's not noticeable. Let's bring our top back in again. There we go. Now, if you want to, you can then combine these together onto this layer so they're all one piece. And you then can adjust the values of the girl a little bit. If she's a little bit too, too bright, you can try adjusting that those values. But I think I'll stop at this point to just kind of have these things let her work with at a later date. But there you go. Let's fit that on screen. We're basically there. All the problems have been cleaned up. We could do a little bit of tweaking in here if we wanted to. Notice we have a little bit of a problem with the shadow on there. We don't have her shadowing. You know, she had more of a shadow. Let me bring her picture back up again. You see there's a bit more of a shadow along that side. And we lost a little bit of that shadow in there. That's easy to bring back in. Just go in here to our image. And I'll bring the effects up. A little bit of a drop shadow. It's on the wrong side. I'll undo the global light. Okay, there you go. It's now over on the right side where I want it. So the light source is up here someplace, coming down this way. And if I move that, you'll see that shadow. There it is. It's a little bit of a shadow. And let's soften that out just a touch. Choose OK. And that just helps to place her back into that picture. So there we go. There is how to do what I call an impossible fix. As you can see, it's not actually impossible at all. It's just a matter of working through each element individually, separating out the parts that are problems, and then fixing each problem separately, and then you end up with a nice, clean image. Okay, I have just a couple of questions to answer here on this particular image. A few things they may have thought about. First one, of course, is why I used a mask in here instead of cutting the image out. As I cut the image out for these two steps, why use a mask over here? That just gave me a protection because I can always come back and modify the shape of that mask if I wasn't quite happy with that edge. But I could have just cut the image out as well and worked that way. You know, it's just, you know, however you want to approach that, it's up to you. Now, can you do this kind of a fix like we had here on the neckline. Can you do that kind of fix and this little bit over here without using that puppet warp tool? You can. It's a little more difficult. What I would do is I would make a selection around the neckline like this and then down around here. And once I had the, you know, I'd make that where I wanted to have the neckline, not where it is like that. But I'd, I'd make the line around where I wanted to have the neckline to be. And I'd then use clone stamp to unclone stamp up into the edge of that selection and then use that. Now the problem with that is you don't have some of the natural shape in here, some of the highlights and shadows and so forth which you can retain with the Puppet Warp tool. So it can be done but it's just a little trickier to do it that way. Now if you want to adjust the values in her image here you'll need to 
blend these or merge these into this layer to do that because if you just adjust the values down here those are going to stand out they're going to pop out as not matching let me just show you that very quickly here i'm going to make a new group there's group one let's just pull this into group one here and that into group one okay so those are all in one group pull that in that's my protection arm. We don't actually need that. I got away without having to use that. Okay, so there's group one. I'll make a copy of group one. And we'll hide that. In our copy here, I'm going to merge these three layers. Right click and let's merge those layers down to one layer. There we go. Now that it's one layer, I can adjust the values on that we can you know use our different adjustment tools in here maybe use our shadow highlights and play around with this a little bit see if we can get a little better look maybe darken her down just a touch try to even out some of that lighting So again, you can you know, use these different tools to come in and adjust the values and make it look a little more naturalistic. You can see there she was before and here she is with those value changes. So she doesn't look quite as flashed as she did before. So it kind of took away some of that flash look by using the standard tools up here. The one I like to use the most here is the shadows and highlights. We're kind of playing around with those a little bit too bring down that flashed look again improves the picture just a little bit but to do that you do have to merge those three layers together that we have here these separate elements make sure that those are all merged into one layer so that when you make those adjustments it's adjusting everything otherwise these will stand out and kind of look like they've been pasted on top of the picture which in this case they actually have okay so there we go just a few a couple little questions in there, a couple things you can think about. And that is how you do this kind of real tricky problem. And you know the main, the main approach here, as you saw me work through this step by step, was that you want to separate the picture into different elements and then fix each section, one section at a time. And if you take that approach, then it, it becomes a much more doable task. It doesn't look as daunting as this does to begin with. You look at this to start off with, you say, you know, how can we possibly fix that thing? But as you can see, we did a very good job, you know, real nice fix on this, but we approached it and took one piece at a time. Now you could go, you know, one step further if you wanted her to have that that mug over here. We we could have cut this mug out carefully, adjusted the values on that, stuck that back into the picture again as, as a last step. And left the mug in there you know or put something else in there it's up to you once you have everything cleaned out and separated in individual sections then it's easy to go in and make additional tweaks but there you go that's how to do what i call an impossible fix on an image thank you for watching this special photoshop photography project video don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.